So welcome to this video for variance analysis on F5. Now in F5 uh, variances have a slightly uncomfortable place, a slightly odd place, in that the actual variances we need to know about and be able to calculate in F5 are fairly limited. They are material mix and yield, uh, sales mix and quantity, operating and planning variances and so on. So we're not going to get questions asking us to do uh, all of the uh, original basic variances uh, that you know from old, but they are assumed knowledge. Now what that means is you're not going to get a 10 mark question, 10 mark part of a question asking you to do all of the material usage and material price, labour rate, labour efficiency, fixed overhead variances and so on. But it does mean that if they want you to, say, uh, work out the labour operating and planning variances, then it may well be in the part before that they want you to show what the uh, normal uh, labour rate and efficiency variances might be. So we need to know, we need to be comfortable with the idea of the basic variances. Um, now, in particular, that's going to be the labour rate and efficiency, the material price and usage variances, and I would say the sales volume and sales price variance, particularly sales volume variance, is going to be useful to recap. However, you're not going to be asked uh, to do a huge operating statement and all the variances and so on. So what we're going to do to start with is just recap those. We're going to take one example, example one here, which has got some information um, about a uh, standard cost card and then about the actual results. And what we're going to do is do all of the variances. But bear in mind that this is a recap, this is for assumed knowledge, and the main ones to make sure you're happy with are the labour rate and efficiency, the material usage and price, and the sales volume variance. The others, for example, I will go through how the fixed overhead variance variances uh, come about, the fixed overhead volume variance, and the split of the fixed overhead volume variance under absorption costing. All of those I'll go through, just in case people are concerned about them, but for F5, I think it's extremely unlikely that you're going to be asked to produce fixed overhead volume variances. Okay. So, this is just put in place, that reminder. Now, it's going to take a little while because there's a lot of variances to go through, but we just run through them and make sure that it reconciles before going on to the variances which are the focus of F5. So in example one, what have we got? We have a standard cost card, as you can see. Uh, we have materials, labour, variable overheads, fixed overheads. Uh, notice fixed overheads are absorbed inside the unit cost, five hours at $2 per hour, so $10 per unit. Uh, the company is budgeting to sell 10,000 and produce 11,500 units. There's no opening inventory and the budgeted selling price is $80 per unit. So before we start on the actual results, we could work out the budgeted profit. Uh, we've got $65 of costs, $80 of revenue, so that's $15 on every item. And we're intending to sell 10,000. So 15 times by 10,000 is budgeted profit of 150,000 under absorption costing. No need to worry about the uh, fact that we're producing, intending to produce more than we're going to sell, uh, because that will be looked after uh, by the closing inventory valued at the standard $65. So that's a budgeted profit. What actually happened? What actually happened was completely different. We have uh, that we sold 9,800 for $81 per unit, produced 11,000. All the costs were different, the amount we used of everything was different, whether it be material or labour hours and so on. Uh, what we could do uh, right now is just check what the profit actually was and then we know what difference we're having to reconcile. So the actual profit achieved was as follows. Uh, we had sales in the balance sheet and looking at what's available for them, which is profit 
after tax, all the way down after interest and after tax.